Thank you, thank you. Uh, I think I'll get good use out of this. <laughs> the demands of the job, I think it'll be actually lit up a lot. Uh, anyway, it's great to be here. It's wonderful to be here. I see many, many members of the General Assembly here. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, uh, Speaker and Senator DuPont for being here, Treasurer, Secretary of State, Lieutenant Governor. It's, it's a great thing when we all can get together uh, to reaffirm our commitment to Rhode Island. Uh, and, and show that we can listen to one another and we can make progress by tackling some of these issues. I also want to thank uh, President Makeley for hosting us. Um, I have to say I was amazed by my tour. I was walking around for a while. It's unbelievable what you've done here. Um, I have a special place in my heart for Bryant because my mother went to Bryant some years ago. We won't say how many. Uh, and you know, it was Little Bryant College at the time, and look at what it is now. Something that is a global, globally recognized university, and this building in particular was recognized as, I think, one of the most innovative buildings in the world. So congratulations for all you've done, and thank you for what you did. Uh, so Kat, I couldn't agree with you more when you say that this is an important venue and that we are listening. Uh, I do want to offer my most sincere gratitude for every single one of you for staying engaged. You know, it's easy to, to give up, but you don't. You come back every year, you give us your best ideas, and we do our best to enact them. Uh, so last year when I came, I got an earful about the uh, Certificate of Good Standing. And you know what? It was really good to hear that, because we can't fix it until we know. And so I went back to the team and we got to work. And between last year and this year, we cut the time in half, actually more than in half. Uh, and you played an incredibly important role in that. We, we did a lean process. We cut out, I think, 50 steps, as Cap was saying. And, I, and there's more to do. You know, we've gone from over 60 days average to under 30 days average. It's actually only about a week if you have all your paperwork in place. And I hope to come back next year and tell you it's online. Uh, and it's, you know, down to a few days. So real progress. We're doing our part. I see Rob Hall back there. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Nina. And thank you guys for putting that on our radar. Second thing I heard last year was, hey, Governor, you need to do a better job with the way you do your MBE process. That was one of your top recommendations last year from one of your groups. And so we're doing that as you were right. You're exactly right. We had a very difficult process, and as a result, the results weren't where they needed to be. You know, we have a state law that says 10% of contracting should go to minority, women, and disabled-owned businesses. And for years, we've been at 6%. Not okay, not acceptable. So yesterday, I announced that we're going to get to 12%. We're going to double where we are, and we're going to, be, we're going to do better than what's legislatively required. And we're going to do that by taking some of the steps that you guys have recommended. Actually, we've already taken some of the steps. Making it easier to be certified as an MBE. It was way too complicated. You pointed that out to us. We fixed it, and we're going to fix it even more. Also, making sure that when you submit your first bid, the MBE component is there. It's not an afterthought. Uh, so again, I want to thank you. Cheryl is here, and Sabina Matos, I saw somewhere, is here. So thank you guys, and all of you in the community, thank you for bringing that to our attention. Um, we've eliminated, working with the Assembly, the commercial sales tax on energy use, money in the pocket of every single small business, an idea that came out of this group. I agree with Cap, we need to do more on the unemployment insurance tax. It's a direct tax, however, I am pleased to say that working collaboratively with the General Assembly last year, we did put through a $30 million unemployment insurance tax cut, which is going to affect every small business. You're going to see it starting this week. It went into effect in the new year. So there is some relief. Not everything we need, but it's $30 million that are going to go into the pockets of every business starting this year. And I, I think I can speak. You know, I've been very fortunate to have a House and a Senate leadership who've worked collaboratively on both of those tax initiatives so we could get them done. Uh, I have to say, in general, if you look around the country right now, 
There's a lot of gridlock in state houses. And there's a little gridlock in Washington. But not here. We might not agree on everything, but we've been able to get things done. We've cut the corporate minimum tax. We've cut the unemployment insurance tax. We've cut the sale, commercial sales tax on uh, energy consumption. We've invested in job training. We've set up apprenticeship programs. We've improved um, but people's ability to get a good career in technical education in high school. And I want to publicly thank Speaker Mattiello, Senate President, and the leadership in the Senate for being good partners. Because the people that benefit when we work together are the people of Rhode Island. Whole lot more work to do, but some excellent progress. I uh, want to say one more thing quickly, and it, it harkens back to the place where we are, which is this innovation center. Uh, in order for Rhode Island to really thrive, we need more high wage jobs. We need economic growth. And some of that comes from what we're talking about, creating a better business environment. Fewer regulations, lower business taxes, people want to be here. But some of that, a lot of it, also comes from investing in skills. Every single business person I talk to, from the very biggest to the very smallest, identifies for me that their biggest problem is not being able to find the skilled labor force that they need on their timeline at the price they can afford. So we're making some progress. We have computer science being taught in every school in Rhode Island. Something only, you know, we were first in the nation around that. We're improving CCRI, Rhode Island College and URI. We're making it easier and less expensive to get a college degree. Real Jobs Rhode Island, thank you to every one of you who's helped us to make that great. But while we're cutting taxes, which is important to do, uh, and I do look forward to working with the assembly to cut the car tax and make it more fair, we can't keep our eye off investing in growth. Because the hottest, fastest growing economies in America today, including our neighbor just to the north, are the ones that have invested in innovation, job training, and skills. And that's public schools, that's our universities, that's apprenticeship programs, that's CTE programs. And so my priorities are the same as yours in many ways. Keep the taxes low, keep the regulations where they need to be, make government work, make it easy to interface with us, but let's not lose sight of the fact that at the end of the day, the thing that's gonna drive Rhode Island is economic growth, high-scale, high-wage jobs, and my job is to make sure the Rhode Islanders get those jobs. We brought in General Electric. We brought in Johnson & Johnson. We brought in Cambridge Innovation Center. These are some of the best companies in the world, and they've said they want to be in Rhode Island. Now let's make sure Rhode Islanders get those jobs, because they have the skills that those companies need. So I'm excited uh, to continue to work with you. I am grateful for your continued commitment to Rhode Island. Um, and Happy New Year, and let's get something done.